Do expensive shoes lead to greater running performance? It might surprise you, but we actually have data to answer this question. And after reviewing the research myself, I can let you know there are some pretty expensive shoes that don't quite reach the same benchmark as others on the market. How do we have data to this question? Well, two researchers named Dustin and Garrett put their minds together and designed a study to compare seven super shoes against one traditional shoe and correlated the shoe's performance with price. If you aren't sure what a super shoe is, over the past several years, we have seen unprecedented advances in shoe technology. Nike has paved the way, creating these aggressive racing shoes, leaving the other brands frantically playing catch up, formulating their own super shoes to compete with the ever-growing popularity. A super shoe will commonly have several common characteristics. These being high-tech foam in the base of the shoe, an embedded carbon fiber plate, an extreme stack height, and also quite a pronounced rocker. Each of these features plays a role of returning and converting as much energy as possible into propulsion. As a result, those wearing these shoes would have a more economical stride and outperform their previous bests or outperform their competitors. I've also witnessed a very common misconception about how super shoes actually work. So my bonus tip at the end of this video will bust this myth and you can learn how to exploit these super shoes for top performance. Since you're paying top dollar for them, you might as well learn how to take full advantage. Okay, back to the study. Next, Dustin and Garrett needed participants in their study. So they put together a specific inclusion criteria and put their feelers out to see how many interested participants it filtered down to. To test all these expensive shoes, they agreed the participants needed to have the same shoe size. And even more importantly, they needed to test well-trained athletes who could run steadily at 16 kilometers per hour on a treadmill while remaining below their lactate threshold. Lactate threshold is just a fancy term which means the fatigue isn't quickly accumulating. This is why criteria number two was set. And if participants were running below their lactate threshold, Dustin and Garrett could put all this fancy equipment on the runners and accurately measure a steady oxygen consumption and therefore accurately determine their running economy. For those of you who have watched my recent video uncovering the best strength training method for running performance, you'll know that running economy describes how efficient you are at utilizing oxygen. And if you can change something, in this case shoes, that enhances the running economy, you'll feel less tired while traveling at the same speed or travel faster while traveling at the same effort level. And if shoes can significantly improve your running economy, that would be extremely helpful if your goal is to run faster. With this inclusion criteria set, they went out searching and found 12 trained males. They were ready to start testing. So one by one, each of the 12 runners came into the lab and after a 10 minute warm up, they were handed these expensive super shoes and told to run for five minutes at 16 kilometers per hour. After five minutes, they would switch to another shoe and repeat the process. Here are the seven super shoes tested and the one traditional shoe for comparison, along with the price in US dollars at the time of publication. For each shoe tested, the researchers closely monitored the running economy. Each shoe was allocated in random order. After each of the 12 runners completed their testing, they then returned at a later date and repeated the process. This time, to rule out any bias or fatiguing factors, they reversed the order. Pretty smart if you ask me. I know you run Smarter Scholars as switched on and recognize that shoe weight plays a crucial role in running economy. In fact, some studies have shown that running economy is negatively impacted by 1% for every 100 grams added to a shoe. Well, the paper made a special mention saying none of the tested shoes differed in mass by more than 30 grams. Okay, all the runners have been tested in each shoe. They've even come back a second time and repeated the testing in reverse order. This time for Dustin and Garrett to sit down, crunch the numbers and see the order of performance. First were two super shoes that did not significantly improve running economy compared to the traditional shoe. Those were the Hoka Rocket X and the Brooks Hyperion Elite 2. All other shoes significantly improved running economy but some more than others. So here are two shoes I have labeled as mid-range improvers. 
These shoes improved running economy by less than 1.5% and were the New Balance Fuel Cell RC Elite and the Sacconi Endorphin Pro. The next three shoes impressively enhanced running economy by more than 2.5%, which I'll reveal in order. Coming in at number three is the ASICS Metaspeed Sky with an average improvement of 2.5%. Number two was the Nike Zoom X Vaporfly Next% 2 with an average improvement of 2.7%. Lastly, number one was the Nike Air Zoom Alpha Fly Next Percent, which was a clear top performer and averaged an improvement of 3%. An improvement of 3% is massive and is why these shoes are breaking records across the world in short and long distance events. But if you wanted to pile an extra 4% improvement in running economy, check out my video on the best strength routine for runners I'll share the video at the end. So while the top tier performance shoes are in the top tier of price, we have to name and shame the Brooks Hyperion 2 at $250 without having much effect on performance. Now, before I get into my bonus tip, busting a very common super shoe misconception, there are a few important aspects of this study we need to mention. You're probably wondering why runners are performing better in different shoes if they have the same carbon plate and the same weight at the same stack height? Well, the answer probably lies in the different foam technologies used between shoes. This is highlighted by the authors in the paper and said that the foam and or interaction of the foam and the plate is crucial to the economy benefits. This is also the opinion of Simon Barthold, who I interviewed on the Run Smarter podcast, saying that the best foam is 20% lighter and has 30% greater energy return than the next best on the market. Another important consideration is that these economy improvements are an average between the 12 runners. For example, the second rank shoe was actually the top performer for four runners and the third rank shoe was actually the best for two runners. However, you might find data pulled from this paper useful. This is the percentage of runners that had a benefit of at least 2%. Compare this to the percentage of runners that had at least a 3% benefit. Looking at the data this way, it actually increases my confidence that the top three shoes are actually represented as the best. Okay, to my final bonus tip to help you utilize these super shoes. The big myth or misconception about these carbon fiber shoes is that they act like a spring. This is because you might assume the plates behave like the Blade Runner, or perhaps you've seen those viral videos where people let go of a bent carbon plated shoe and it launches two stories in the air but it doesn't act like a spring at all. In fact, it acts like a lever at initial contact. This is important because if you are a four foot striker, you cannot take full advantage of these shoes. It doesn't act like a spring and you aren't exploiting the lever effect. So those who have a subtle heel strike can use the rigidity of the shoe and rock it into forward momentum, getting the most out of the shoe. Thanks for watching Run Smarter Scholars. Here comes the strength training video to check out if you want to continue enhancing your running economy and finding out if body weight, heavy strength or plyometrics is the way to go.